Well, how's it going, guys and girls? I am back after a successful trip to Callaway Gardens last weekend to watch my only son get married. Boy, has he done well. As with me, he has way out kicked his coverage with his, uh, with his wife. She is uh, something special. And it was something special watching it all unfold. It was beautiful, 72 degrees outside wedding. They took over the Discovery Center, if you're familiar with uh, Callaway uh, Gardens. Got married at 6.30 and they finally ran us out of there at like 12.15. Way too much fun. Way too much fun. Well, how is everyone doing today? Hopefully well. Hopefully well. All right, guys. Let's spin around and look at some of the questions that, uh, that I may have missed two weeks before or didn't answer. And I told you I was going to do this, a uh, follow-up on this, finally. Thomas Gentile had asked me about a set of Ford controls for a 2009 HD Sportster. And now granted, we, we being Partzilla, we don't really specialize in Harley-Davidson parts, although we do carry some. And the ones that I landed on were made by Bike Master, and the part number is as follows. 16220349. That would be the ones that I would recommend to go on that machine. And those are available in black or you can get them in chrome. But uh, Thomas, if you are watching this today, you will need to call customer service because there's a little glitch in our in our website that wants you to be bike specific. Well, guess what? <laughs> we don't have Harley Davidson in our da database. So kind of a uh Catch-22, you can look at the part, but then it won't let you order it. So if you would, just uh, contact us, either uh, instant message or, I think you've been dealing with Michael, um, or just call customer service, and we can get those ordered for you. All right, next, Lee Kirsch. Brakes aren't working too well. That could be a bad thing. How do I know if it's glazed, pads, or rotors? Well... If they're glazed, one directly affects the other. The easiest thing to do is look in and look at the rotor itself. And if it's really shiny, then chances are you've glazed them over because what happens is the brake compounds get so hot that they harden and then that kind of, they lose their ability to really clamp down and uh, stop whatever vehicle that you've got them attached to. Now, if that happens, you can probably save your rotors, but you have to pretty much scrub them of the that material so it has a new surface or a clean surface or a non-glazed surface to bite into now as far as uh, trying to reuse the brake pads well i wouldn't really recommend that once they've been glazed over that severely they just need to go in the trash can and that also means well why would you want to reuse brake pads that aren't really uh up to the task because if you're really running a machine that hard then you need to have a higher performance brake compound so to speak Ask me how I know. <laughs> All right. Steve LaForce had asked me, I have a 2010 Honda Sabre CS 1300. It has a starting issue. Even with a new battery, it will not crank over enough to start the motor. I have to use a battery charger hooked to it to the tender cables to start the bike. Hmm. I can ride the bike for around 10 minutes, but after I turn it off, it will not start again. Your thoughts would be very much appreciated. Ooh, well, uh, normally I would say, yeah, it's going to be your battery. Then I'm starting to think, all right, well, if you're having to, um, you know, give it that much more amperage for the set of uh, jumper cables to get it to turn over, I would think, well, okay, maybe his, his starter is starting to fail and uh, it just need and it needs to be replaced. But then you say after, after around 10 minutes, you turn it off, and, and uh, I can ride the bike 10 minutes, turn it off after I, it will not start again. Your thoughts. All right, well, assuming that the battery is good and the charging system is good, I'm really leaning toward that starter itself is starting to, it's wearing out, and those the motor is starting to just bind up. It's basically an electric motor inside of there, a DC one. And uh, maybe I'm thinking maybe it is time for a new starter. So that's that's my opinion from uh, sitting on this side of uh, a camera and a laptop. All right, Colin, uh, uh, Colin, 
<laughs> Hi, I have a GSXR 1000 K2. Tried to start a bit when you operate the start button. It gives a click, click, click very rapidly until you release the start button. I uh, connected it to my car battery with jump leads. Did the same thing. Can you help? Hmm. All right. Well, that's definitely not enough power making it through the starting solenoid or the starter relay, if you want to call it that, to actually turn it over. All right. I've seen them where if the battery is just so dead or if it's in that weak of condition, even putting on a jump box still can't get it done because that weak or that dead battery is dragging down the jump box as well. Now, let's assume that that is not the case and your battery is healthy, which I would recommend you getting it tested. What you would need to uh, look at it next is that starter solenoid it's, itself, because I've seen them, they bring in those contacts and they just click. And, and that is not so much the battery not being strong enough, it's the coil inside of that starter relay that's pulling up those contacts that is starting to fail. Now, which one is it probably? I'm leaning more toward the battery, but I have seen that happen uh, where it, a healthy battery just made it click. It took a while to run that one down, longer than I want to admit. Keith, I have a 1300 VTX. That is a Honda for those that don't know. I'm trying to, <clears throat> about to get into trying to find out why it just decides to shut off while riding for no reason. When this happens, you need to sit there for a while and wait for it to restart. It's gotten really bad to the point where it's just happening a lot and I can no longer trust it. Any tips on where I should start looking? I'm thinking a fuel relay or yes, even the fuel pump, but not ignoring that it could be the wiring to the kill switch starter. Appreciate any comments, please. Thanks a lot. All right, a couple of things. Um, it's not gonna be a fuel pump because it doesn't have one. This is a carbureted system and it is just gravity fed through that petcock, which I believe is on the, it's on the right. Yeah, I can't remember, it's been so long. So I've slung a leg over a VTX. But it sounds to me like it's one of two things. Either, yes, it is starving for fuel, but if it's starving for fuel and your fuel system is not clogged, it may be on the vent side of the tank, not allowing the, the fuel that's going out to have air behind it. And then, you know, that's basically creating a vacuum and it's not going to operate for very long and then it will shut down. Now, there's another possibility on this one. It is a V-twin but it has a single coil that, uh, that of course has wires that go out to your, your two spark plugs. But that being said, if that coil is starting to fail and it generally when coils fail, they will operate when they're cold, but as they heat up, uh, they'll, if there's an internal short going on, then they will, you know, of course they can't create a field and they just shut down. Uh, in essence, they go to ground or go from the coils to the front to the back. So that being said, it could be one of the two. Um, how can you determine that? Probably the best thing is once it shuts off, go ahead and pull one of your spark plugs and see if it's still getting spark. And if that's the case, then, well, it's time to take a more in-depth look on the breathing system of the fuel tank. I can't remember if it's got one or two breather hoses that go under there, but I think it's just one. So one or the other, I'm betting at this point. All right, let's swing around and see what all questions we have for today, because that is all the backups, or not backups, the uh, the stuff that I had left over from last week or two weeks ago. Penny, am I going to try to pronounce that last name? It's been a while since I uh, caught you live. I uh, just got done putting a Polaris 900 razor following everything you're doing. Now I'm working on getting the clutch on the last on the last thing I'm putting on. Hopefully it will be fired up by the end of the day. Thanks for those videos. Well, you're very welcome. And uh, if you can, send us a, a, a quick message with a, just a few seconds of it running. I'd like to hear it. Chris R. How's it going, Chris? Greetings, John. I'm really enjoying these and all the questions from our group. We appreciate you and your team. Well, glad to be here. And <laughs> believe me, we appreciate y'all coming around and spending some time with us. It makes the, the end of my week well, fun. It's, after working on stuff like this all week, it, this is fun to get away and just sit over here and answer a few questions. 
By the way, it is getting really close to finishing that thing or firing it up. I almost don't want to admit how long I've had this thing apart. But it came up on my Time Hop app that I took this, this machine apart almost a year ago. Now, granted, I take a lot of pictures and I've got all kind of all kinds of information as far as how that thing should go back together. But boy, is it tough trying to remember how to uh, reinstall an entire wiring harness. That's what I'm in the middle of doing now. And good grief. You think you take enough pictures, but there'll be one thing that you can't quite see if the, the wire went on one side of another of another piece of equipment. But I will get this thing together. I promise you that. But boy, is it time consuming. So if you ever have to do a frame or a wiring harness, just pictures, pictures, pictures. And when you think you've taken enough, take 50 more. That's the best advice I can give you. Oh, uh, Bradley Owens, John, how's it going? Wide, wide open the, in the shop the last few weeks. Hope all is well. Bradley, everything is really good in, in my world. So I'm, I'm, in, I'm in a happy place, especially after last weekend. Uh, Robert's asking me, Hi there, I'm picking up my first bike of CB500XS, XX22, can't wait. Well, heck yeah, Robert, welcome to the uh, the riding community. If, if you'd like, after you pick it up, snap a couple of photos and send, send them over to us in the, uh, on, the, uh, on the instant messenger. And who knows, maybe we'll pop them up on a couple of our, uh, I don't want to say websites, some of our uh, channels, so to speak. Shada Miranda Larson, how's it going? Good afternoon, John. Got an 07 Big Bear 400 IRS in the shop this weekend, needing a rear differential bearing and seal. There's rusted mud running out. Both of the axles are completely sealed. Ooh, that's going to suck. And of course, after so many times attempting to pop the axles out, um, I only have the inner part to work with. What's your solution? I've run into that before, um, and <laughs> you're going to laugh. I had a set, it was just an axle, and I, it just would not release. I can't even remember which unit it was, but it was a, I think it was on a Polaris, because I knew that they were going to be unusable. I actually took a chain, half of a chain loop and welded it to the damn thing, and then I used a slide hammer to remove it. So I'm, I'm sure you shop, you probably have a uh, welder, whatever's left in that thing, give you uh, uh, some type of hook to weld in there and get out the slide hammer and hey, it'll work. Well, it should. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Chris R, do spark arresters reduce horsepower? Can I just run uh, any metallic screen in place of a factory spark arrestor or by mashing it in between the cap and the silencer? The spark arresters cut it back a little bit, maybe slightly, Chris, but it's, it's not that dramatic. Um, I've seen where you ride, where you ride, and I think it's mostly in sand, so it's not a big deal. Um, so I think you can get away with that. Now, where I live, it's uh, nothing but woods, and we have to be very careful, uh, especially in the dry season, because you know, <laughs> I don't want to be the guy that burns down several thousand acres of uh, um, Georgia wilderness. But yeah, if you're out in the, uh, just in the sand, yeah, no harm, no foul. Just keep that in mind if you ever do take your machine um, in the woods, because, you know, it can be a hazard. But honestly, I don't think it really cuts it back that much. I, I, I would challenge you to run it with and then without, without or, you know, the, uh, the spark arrestor and see if you can feel a difference. Why don't you do that test for us and see where, what happens. David Burns, 2004 RMZ 250, complete rebuild, now blows oil out of the crankcase and breather hose. Woo. All right. Um, have you really broken it in yet? Because what you're, uh, what you're describing is just a lot of blow by, and that's usually by the rings um, failing. Uh, or in your case, since you've done a complete rebuild, I wonder if they have, uh, if they failed to seat properly. Um, Best thing, do a compression test. Get an idea where the machine is and then uh, go from there. Uh, you probably don't want to hear that, but hey, it's if you build engines long enough, eventually uh, it happens. 
I've had it happen to me. <clears throat> Penny A said, yes, I can put together a short little video of it running and send it to you. That'd be great. I mean, this, this is part of the fun of interacting uh, every Friday, seeing what everybody's up to and showing the rest of uh, our little world, which you may be up to. You can't always follow me around. Come on. <laughs> mm. Burke Zero, thank you for your videos. Well, Burke, thank you for swinging by and spending some time with us today. It's 3.15, guys. Y'all going to let me get out of here early? Really? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, a couple more. Truly, how long have you been in the industry? Whew. <laughs> this goes back a while. Say, so what year would this be? 1979 is when I had my first quote, quote, job as a pseudo mechanic. I would be um, 15 at the time, almost 16, no, 16 at the time. And I worked as the shop cleanup kid at Honda of Albany. It was just a single line dealership, Honda. That was all there was. And uh, every day after school, that's where I went to uh, clean up. Eventually, uh, they moved me up to assembling some of the simpler units, Z50s, ATC, 110s, things of that nature, back in the dark ages when the Honda product line, I think, was a total of 15 different machines. But yeah, I've been around since the 80s, so it goes back quite a bit. Somewhere in there, I got an electrical engineering degree, and then uh, I was in that environment for a long time, and then... Just by chance, I, I started uh, back at the dealership, which the Outdoor Network eventually bought and then evolved into Partzilla. So you just never know what's coming down the pipe, but it has been interesting. In interesting. But yeah, in the, in, the, in the industry since the 80s. <laughs> oh, Grammy Sweets. Oh, boy. Don't go, John. We miss you too much. My grandkid wants a fun 50 to play. Is the TT, TTR 50 a good place to start? Absolutely. Just make sure he's wearing all, he or she is wearing all the right equipment. I'm a big believer in that. Panay uh, Pen was asking me, what, is, what was your first bike? Now, granted, I actually started riding that machine right behind us, that exact machine, a 1968 Honda CT90, when I was four. <laughs> but it wasn't mine. That was my dad's. Um, and of course, you know, could I reach the pedals? No. So I'd ride around in first gear. And when I got ready to get off, I'd start blowing the horn and dad would just walk out of the shop up next to me and take the controls. And all that worked fantastically till I ran out of fuel. So I just kind of blew the horn on the way down. But my first bike was a 1974 Honda XL70. I put over 4,000 miles on it. I think it was 4,115.8. And I know that because when I traded it in, um, I was so attached to that machine, I asked the salesperson if I could have the speedometer off of it. And they did. I still have it to this day. <laughs> Burke Zero, my Honda CRF 450X is blown up. Uh, forget to fill, oh no, I forgot to fill the transmission oil and now I'm rebuilding it. Well, I'm sorry you're having to go through that. Um, on the 450s, remember you've got two separate compartments for transmission versus uh, the crankcase oil. Dennis Emmons, I've learned a lot from your videos. Uh, now have a GL1800 and an ST1300. Cool. Chris R, tail 50. What are you asking me there, uh, Chris? Hmm. Oh, and they, uh, we actually did a video starring the, that CT90. Hmm. Well, not that one. I think I know what they're talking about. The first um, CT90 I have ever, or first engine I ever rebuilt is I have a 1973, which also belonged to my dad, bought new, one owner, um, that I rebuilt when I was either 12 or 13. It took me like a month. <laughs> but at any rate, see it, check out that video that they're talking about. 
And I think in the video, they, they kind of messed with my words a little bit. It said my first bike. It was actually the first engine I ever rebuilt, if it's the one I'm thinking of. All right, guys. I've caught up with you. And I think I'm going to call it a day. Well, I just want to tell everybody thank you. That's a, today was an especially fun one. I like reminiscing, talking about uh, old machines and old times. It's kind of fun. Well, everybody, y'all have a great weekend, a great week, and God willing, we will get together next Friday at 3, and we'll do all this again. So until then, y'all take care, and we will see you next Friday. Thanks.